Hi there, it's two days to Christmas. My name is Kobe Spike King Kruma, and I'm here to make you enjoy Join News Interactive. Well, I just said it's two days to Christmas, and it is eight days to the end of the year. So I'll be talking about some things that have to do with Christmas, some things that have to do with politics, and yeah, we're going to keep it interactive, talking about social media, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. On Tuesday, something happened. Organizers called it a walk. Some Ghanaians described it as a demonstration. And the National Democratic Congress members of parliament visited, as they also term it, to present a petition to the chairperson of the Electoral Commission. It turned chaotic at a point, and the MPs were disappointed they weren't allowed to see the EC chair. Must have been something, huh? Right in parliament insist the NDC parliamentary candidate for Tejiman South, Christopher Bayer, won the seat which has been declared for the MPP candidate Martin Ejemen Sakosam. The Tichiman South seat is important because the minority and majority both have 137 seats. MPs march... <laughs> Now joining us via Zoom are Bright Sananu, Julius Kwame Anthony to talk about what we just saw. Bright and Sananu, as oh, Bright and Julius, as ordinary Ghanaians, what do you make of this? First of you, Bright. Well, um, to be very sincere with you, I personally think this is quite unwarranted, unwarranted at the first place because um, once there are constitutional provisions or legal provisions that allows you to seek redress at the appropriate forum, uh, storming the streets, uh, particularly as uh, lawmakers whose bosom or who scrutinize these laws that have been passed is, is quite unfortunate. So I don't think that um, hitting the streets as lawmakers who are enjoined 
by the constitution one way or the other to pass these laws uh, is appropriate. I think the resort to the streets was quite unwarranted. And the scaffold between the police and them, I, I wish and hoped that it shouldn't have gotten to that extent. That I realized an MP fell down and all of that. Mm -hmm. I think it should have gotten to that extent. Um, I think the police was quite uh, professional to some extent too. Um, uh, but hitting the street, of course, was, was unwarranted. Right, right, right. Julius, as an ordinary Ghanaian, what do you make of this? You know, um, I sincerely think that the NDC's position mm. on the issue right now is because of the background of the issues. Right. The situation is not a textbook situation where you can't see because they are lawmakers, they shouldn't go on the streets and protest mm. or they shouldn't act in a manner which you term is unlawful. First of all, demonstrations and protests are legal options available to agree citizens in the country. Mm -hmm. So you cannot have a situation where, because you think a certain group of people are lawmakers, they are not allowed to protest. They are allowed to protest. Even inside parliament, they do protest. So protest is an option which is very legal on the side of the citizen. So mm -hmm. it's going to court. So if you tell us that in this situation, the NDC protesting alone, and because this MPs that led that protest is unlawful, it will be unfair. Now, here's the situation. The situation about Techiman South is such that the constituency is in contention because the declaration made by the returning officer was done without the parliamentary summary sheet of that constituency. Now, how can a returning officer declare a person as elect when there is no evidence of that declaration? The only way the returning officer can declare a candidate as elected is when results from all polling stations have been collated evidentially on a summary sheet. So if you make that declaration and it is in contention, the option is available to the parties involved to petition the electoral commission. The Electoral Commission as an entity has it as its duty to also correct its own errors. That is why we've seen the EC change results throughout the process and it is completely fine. The same way, if they make a mistake with the declaration of the Chiman South, they can correct it. Now, speaking of the backgrounds to the issue, we have up to December 7, where Parliament will be sworn in, a Speaker will be elected. The NDC's position, and when you tell the NDC to go to court, you have to understand that the politics is not in the textbook. It's a reality. The MPP will go ahead because they have an independent candidate who is aligning to them to elect a speaker, which the NDC would also want to rightfully do because they have the majority. That is what they believe. And if the EC can spare us the drama, the EC can just go ahead, recollate the results of Techiman South, and prove to Ghanaians that indeed the NDC has lost it, then we can all go to bed. But the EC deciding to go on a break, you do your job and the most relevant part of your job is at the tail end of the year in December. And in December to January, you are going on a break. That is dishonesty to the Ghanaian people. And it is an abuse to the Ghanaian people to use that office in that manner. What is the most relevant duty of the Electoral Commission? To elect members of parliament and the president of the republic. And in an election that is in contention within that period, you decide to go on a break. It's unfair to the Ghanaian people. So the EC should do its job, recollate the Chiman South if there is no issue with it, and we all go to rest. If you tell the NDC to go to court, when do they go to court? Between now and January 7. The MPP would have gone ahead to swear in people, elect a speaker, which in the event that the NDC overturns the Chiman South to their side, the speaker would have already been gone to the side which should have been the minority. It would be unfair to the NDC. So the EC should do the right thing. When you tell people to go to court, consider the options available to them. Right, right. So, right. Are you worried about the turn of events post the election? I, I think every Ghanaian should be worried, mm. particularly when you have lawmakers. The Public Order Act is quite clear on these issues. Everybody who seeks to demonstrate gather and in the in the form and manner the the members of parliament did for instance must must seek permission from the police and so on mm. so the public order act is quite clear on this one and so if you see members of parliament defying provisions made by they themselves and going ahead to demonstrate in one way or the other they call it a walk 
to the ECM and, 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 and present a petition and the scaffold between them and then the police, I think certain, and that incident in itself, certain is a bad example for their followers. I think every Ghanaian should be worried with the turn of events, extremely worried with the turn of events. And it is not, it is not uh, an option. The option to go to court cannot be closed after the an MP is sworn in. There has been incidents and 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 uh, in this country where an MP is sworn in and the other party feels mm -hmm. that disgruntled and feels that the evidence that mm -hmm. does not provide that the MP is sworn in, and they go to court and seek redress. And such in such cases, the MP, the rightly elected MP, is is removed, and the pe the right person is is sworn in. Mm. And so going to court after even after the the MP is sworn in, and the evidence so proof that there has been some violations and fraud in that election. I think the court will, help, will hold, by its evidence, the court will hold whoever is right. Uh, 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 so, so I think that going to court even after December, uh, January 7th is it, it, an option the party can pursue. And it's, the, the doors are not closed to them uh, even after December 7th. Instead of resorting, indeed, demonstrating on the street, of course, a uh, constitutional uh, right everybody has. but. It should be done in a manner taking into consideration the rights of other citizens and not they them they, they alone you know the demonstrators alone the rights of other citizens for instance you block roads you block roads look from from the, the day of election to today the incessant demonstrations blocking roads and causing havoc burning tires are, are, are those the right options are those the right options? No, 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 not at but all. But I believe any if other the MPP did it previously. It doesn't give. It doesn't give. It doesn't give a legal right mm. to the NDC and its followers to do the same in 2020. And I think that going to court should not be ruled out. Going to court is the right option. Going to court is civil. Going to court is matured in the matured democratic dispensation. And mm. that should be what we should pursue as citizens. You can imagine if this thing happens in the USA, where Donald Trump and his followers think that, and his followers think that their election didn't go right for them, and they hit the streets with this kind of demonstration we are seeing in our dispensation here. Is this right? Never. It's not right. And every citizen of this country should be worried about this. About this we, 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 we wouldn't have a situation in the United States where returning officers would even go ahead and declare parliamentary or legislative seats for congressmen without collating those resources onto a provable summary sheet for mm -hmm. the citizens. We wouldn't even have that situation. And again, it's sad that I have to return to this point, that you are taking things without looking into the perspective and the options available to the parties involved. We have one party who I would say is abusing incumbency, will go ahead and swear in a speaker of parliament because they have an independent member of parliament leaning to the MPP. So if they maintain the Techiman South seat, which clearly the legal option is also available to the NDC to petition the Electoral Commission to undo their wrong if there is. Now, the Electoral Commission has refused to even take the petition to even consider the option of undoing their wrong. Don't forget, court is not the only option available to the NDC. Petitioning the EC to undo their own wrong is also an option. And now the EC doesn't want to Which, of course, should be done in a civil option. manner, right? The EC... Yes. When, and and the know, petitioning let me is right. Let, that should let, be done in a civil manner. You let don't think so. Mm. The NDC, the NDC sent a petition to the Electoral Commission earlier. They didn't receive it. The messenger was sent back. The NDC decided to mail it to the Electoral Commission through the post office. That letter was received but was not responded to. Then the NDC decided to march with their members of parliament to the Electoral Commission to present the petition publicly so that the Ghanaian people see it. It's no longer a matter of post office or messengers. Then and, and, the and police have who are the police. Post, listen to me, listen, the police who are supposed to protect the rights of all citizens decide to block rules whilst the MPs up and down for publicly, and you feel for that defying, you the, public for no, defying the public order act. For defying the public order act. The MPs act. were not on a demonstration. For defying the, the public MPs order were act. Simply going to the EC's headquarters. I, I, think, I think somebody should just run to court and seek interpretation of that and provision. And listen to me. Uh, you <laughs> failing to address the issues from the perspective of the electoral commission, who has failed 
to perform parts of his duties, including taking petitions of electoral victims, those who feel that they've been Julius. cheated in elections. Mm. Between the fact that Julius. between the fact that I, I think you don't that. want to deal with the guys, position, guys, but guys. you want to deal with the effect, so, which is unfair. So, Julius, so first of all, I, I, think, I want I think, you to I speak. Think, I think the right, the right I want you to speak. I want you to speak to the fact that the EC mm -hmm. received two petitions earlier, which is a legal option the NDC has exercised mm. and failed right. to respond to them. And I right. want you to speak to the fact that the members of parliament only decided to march to the electoral commission after those petitions were not responded to. And okay, I want so you to also members recognize thirdly, I want you to recognize thirdly that the members of parliament were not on a demonstration. They walked they to the EC clearly. headquarters to present a petition to the they electoral were. commission, group, which is not a, a demonstration. We, so when, clearly, when we so clearly you. what I see here, what I see here is a situation where you have refused to speak to injustice but want to speak to the actions people take to fight injustice, which is unfair to the Ghanaian people. Okay. Hmm. So what I also see here is, is a group of people, including your good self, who are of the view that, you know, they have the right to choose a Speaker of Parliament um, on the 7th of they January. They have the right to, speak, and, uh, to, choose, to choose a and, Speaker and that of that right, Parliament. That, that right, that right is their is 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 sole reserve. If they legitimately oh, have a majority oh, 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 let, let me just, let me just, let me then, just come and in. Then, you, and then you have a series of questions and I would like to address. They cannot bulldoze their way through the system. They are not bulldoze their way through the system. No, no. Clearly, clearly, they have majority in Parliament. They have majority in Parliament. Now you can see even the... Ordinary Ghanaian is very concerned about what's happening. One side thinks that, hey, it's, it's all good and dandy with what they're doing. And one side also thinks that, no, it shouldn't be like that. Now, Minority Leader Harun Idrisu says the 8th Parliament will not support the vetting and approval of Ministers of State and their deputies exceeding 70 appointees. I still have Bright and Julius with me. So, guys, do you think it's a good call? Um, that um, the, the are not going to join um, they're going to approve. They're not going to approve the appointees exceeding seventy. Well, I think so. I mm. I am of, of the strong view that the, the earlier number of ministers we had was was just way too much. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm a Ghanaian first before before my allegiance to any political party, if if there is any. And so I think that pre the previous numbers we had as ministers were just too much. Right. Now, start with them if they decide to 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 cap it at seventy, and, and I agree with them entirely. Right, Julius, that you also think it's a good call. That that look, you are willing to work in a, for Mother Ghana, and the resort should be meaningful means to seek redress for your problems and right. not hitting the street the, the way a man they are doing. I think I clearly disagree with them on a lot of okay. the things they've done. They are right. just leading to what happened yesterday. We're, we're, we're just on call Right. For. So, but you As agree that... For this country, defying a public ad order act and walking to the EC to present petitions where mm. we're, we're just too bad. Right, right. Julia, so you also agree that they shouldn't agree for the appointees to exceed 70? Yes, I agree. Mm. I think the bloated size of uh, the ministers we've had in the past government, I mean, the just about ending government, mm. is just unwarranted. And that was proven to us in the elections when those of them who were members of parliament were losing their seats all over the place. Right. So um, this time it's a right call that we reduce their sizes and run a very meaningful government. And if I would comment again on the fact that he says people marching to the EC to present petition is, you know, uncivil and all that. He should also comment on the civil actions that were taken, mm. the earlier petitions that were sent and were not responded to. And he should also consider the circumstances around which the NDC would insist on the EC responding to a petition and acting on it rather than going to court. You, you can't can coerce the EC. Right, and Julius. Can't Thank you guys you very much. Coerce. Thank you so much. It's been very interesting talking and listening to you. Um, I, I'm not very political, but I, I think I understand how people have divergent views and the fact that you guys can still smile along all this conversation is very interesting. We'll have you again on another conversation. Thank you very much for your time. So we're going to take a quick breather. And when we come back, we'll be talking about the Ghana Water Company and the notice they've said that free water supply will end at the end of the month. 
President Kufuado, as part of measures to mitigate and help reduce the burden created by COVID-19, gave Ghanaians free water supply for three months and subsequently increased it to six months. Now, did you have constant supply during the period? What was your reaction to this? Join us via Zoom, anyone, anywhere. Just let's have a conversation right after this break. And I'm back. Are you, are you joining the Zoom? Because we need to have that conversation. I need to know, did you get free water? Did you enjoy free water? Are you still bathing free water? The month is almost ended and the year is almost ended. Join the Zoom, let me know. Check our social media, drop a comment, say something. But before that, I'd like to tell you something. You know, I, I love one messaging app. Everybody's using WhatsApp. WhatsApp everywhere you go. Apple users are using iMessage. I personally prefer Telegram. And guess what? So imagine you're in a WhatsApp group, you know, and then everybody's texting, but you find that some people are always sending voice messages and all that. Imagine being in a group, and instead of texting each other, you are just having a conversation. So an always on group voice chat, like a conference call, but it never goes off. And you can only hear people when they talk, and you can also talk only when you unmute, unmute your mic. Well, that's a new feature that Telegram has brought and it was just launched today. So if you're in a group on Telegram, you can update your app and then try it. And let me know what you think. If you want to join any group that's already gotten this going on, you can join the Joy Geek Squad group. That's a show I host on Joy FM. So it's t.me slash Joy Geek Squad. Did you get that? I repeat, t for telephone dot me then slash Joy Geek Squad. Join that group. We talk tech in that group on Telegram and there's a voice chat going on right now. So instead of typing, 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 you can just, yeah, Charlie, I did hear you. You did there. Uh, yeah, me too, I did hear uh, I did hear you, but you didn't hear me. Cool, see? Anyway, hey, do we have people on Zoom? I want to ask them questions about Ghana Hotel. Anybody on Zoom yet? So, Ghana Water Company has self-noticed that the free water supply will end at the end of the month. So sad. I wish it would continue. We have to bath more water. And then, President Kufuado, as part of measures to mitigate and help reduce the burden created by COVID-19, gave Ghanaians free water supply for three months. And subsequently, he increased it to six months. Now, did you have constant supply during the period? And what's your reaction to this? What's your reaction to the fact that that free water supply for six months is ending. Considering that COVID hasn't gone anywhere, it's still there. You know, we still have COVID. So, President Kufuado, we still have COVID. Taking the free water because you gave it to us during COVID season, it's not, it's not cool. Give it back to us, you know. When COVID is gone, then you can take free water. But once COVID is still there, let's still enjoy free water. Do you agree with me or do you have a different opinion? Join us via Zoom, let's have a conversation. Oh wow, I've got a lot of people on there. Hi guys. Yeah, you can turn on your video so I can see who I'm talking to and you can join with your audio. So I can see Jubilant, Yesuto. Yeah, I can see Jones Osei. So any of you enjoying free water? Can anyone hear me? And are you enjoying free water? Right. Jubilant. Jubilant, I can hear you. Are you enjoying free water supply? Yeah. Oh, it's unfortunate. Jubilant's network is quite bad. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Right, so, well, we'll come back to our Zoom. It's very difficult hearing all you guys on Zoom. One, at least one person, send a message or something. Send us a WhatsApp, send us a, a post on Facebook. Tell us if you've enjoyed the free water supply and what's your reaction to the fact that it's going to be ending at the end of this year. Should the president extend it? Is it fine? Yeah, we've enjoyed some. Let's not be greedy. 
Yes, yeah, so all those, wow, that's a whole lot of people. Somebody tell me something. Should the president end it or should it continue? Anyone? You can unmute your mic and then say something. All right. I would yes. like to say something about Great. free water. Um, yeah. My name is Abia. Um, because, um, <laughs> right now I'm at a... Oh, your uh, audio. Hello. Rather unfortunately, we're still get we're getting some very terrible feedback, and we'll try and resolve that. But unfortunately, hmm, still have a little bit of time. We're going to try again, one last time, because I really want to hear from some other people. So one last time, one last time. Yes? Ah, oh, I don't like when technology doesn't work in my favor because yeah, I love tech. So when tech doesn't work in my favor, but I'm gonna fix that. And in the next episode, we're gonna have this conversation again. All too soon, our time has to run out. That's when it goes really fast. I'm going to look for technology to slow down time so I can spend more time with you guys. Anyways, my name is Kobe Spike King Kroma and I have been getting interactive with you over there. Yes, you. Thank you for staying with me. I'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Ciao.